Good evening, this is the Oscar Expert here with Brother Bro. And we're going to review The Souvenir, directed by Joanna Hogg. This movie got a shit ton of hype out of Sundance. A24 got it. One of the most critically acclaimed movies this year. Expectations for this one were pretty high, but very tempered, because while the critics are loving this one, audiences are like... <laughs> they think it's boring as fuck, and I'm thinking, okay, is this a case of, like, The Rider? The Rider, where the critics won't stop, and then it ends up being, like kind of repetitive and not that enjoyable. What would have been better as a short film didn't need to see a feature. That's how I feel about that one. So this director's done a few films, none of which I've seen. They've been, all been pretty small releases. So I think this one has the most attention and people say it's her best movie. You could tell this movie is going to end up on top 10 lists from critics at the end of the year. A young film student in the early 80s becomes romantically involved with a complicated and untrustworthy man. Perfect amount of information. The movie is basically a memoir, I believe, it, that it chronicles a chapter in the director's life where she fell in love with this man while she was attending film school. The movie does a good job at being universal. It's a narrative that I think anybody can relate to. It's, it's a, like a first love narrative in a lot of ways, like a disillusionment from the first love narrative. It's about how we allow people to take advantage of us in our young age. One thing I really admired about this movie was the way that the director was able to so naturalistically capture these moments where characters don't feel like they're reading lines at all. It feels like they're coming up with things on the top of their head. It doesn't feel like there's a script. You can't see the script. I really got that from these performers in this direction. That alone made me not bored of this movie because I felt like I was watching real life. I felt like I was watching like a documentary a lot of the time. The performances are so good in this movie. Uh, Tilda Swinton's daughter, she's perfect in it. She's perfect in the, I, you couldn't imagine anybody else in the role, really. Yeah. And then you have very, Tom very Burke good. as the boyfriend who I think was fantastic because both these characters, there was nothing one dimensional about them. The movie's not trying to paint them in one way or another, even though it's a situation that had somebody like told you this story, you might view some of these people as one thing or another. Oh, she's ignorant or like he's manipulative. But the movie completely avoids doing that. You also recognize the fact that you have probably been in a situation where you've been that person who's ignorant to a situation. Tell Swinton, Tell Swinton this plays movie. the mom in the movie, the real, real mom of the real actress. She's not in the movie that much. Like, if you're going to see it just for her, it's probably not a good idea. But she has a couple scenes where, you know, you really are able to give her character, like, context within the story and think about where she is as a piece. An extremely good example of a supporting character who might not show up a lot, but has a big impact on the movie. The movie's greatest asset is that it is extremely honest, I think. I think the usual instincts to tell a personal story are to tell it with all of the insights that you learned in retrospect. And this movie completely avoids that, I think. It's totally against that sort of catharsis that you normally look for in the movie. And it kind of leaves it up to you to process this event as small and quiet as the movie is it's about like a lurking trauma i would say it's like an experience that is going to stay with her for the rest of her life it's not trying to take you on a journey through the main character's eyes you're not getting like her point of view you're not feeling like the rush of romance that she might be feeling you're looking back on it in a very detached way but in a way that's very sympathetic you always understand that the character might be feeling this but it's also at a disconnect with reality and looking at those things simultaneously is a thing that the Joanna Hogg is really able to do well. Art. The direction I think is nearly flawless. There were some parts towards maybe like two thirds of the way through where I felt I understood the intentions of all the characters so it didn't feel as though it was moving for me but at the same time I could probably watch the movie again and then have a new appreciation for certain scenes because a lot of the scenes are about the way that things are happening or the way that the, the director is like painting these scenes. What's entertaining to me about the movie was that for a long time you're figuring out what the intentions are of these people. You know, there's not a lot of detail revealed about like who these people are or their desires. It's it's extremely observational and for that reason, you know, that's that's what cinema is. This is the kind of work that film school professors encourage you to make. It's total show, not tell. The entire movie. And so there's huge props for that. I think 
the cinematography and the art direction are really worth noting. It, it felt very immersive and all of the choices framing wise were consistent throughout the colors in the movie. It gave it like a very singular feeling. It really, it almost felt like it was a like 17th century period. Yeah, drama even though it was in the 90s. Even though it was in the 90s. Mid 90s. I personally felt like there was just so many elements of the cinematography and everything, the performances. I couldn't help but to feel connected to the story, even when it was a little bit slow. The way that it was shot on a very like film grainy, bolex looking camera, kind of like the one that the character might use in the movie. It had like that really personal feel, and then it also just is a great case to be made for that film grain look. It's a great look at how somebody can be in a relationship with somebody and be naive to the things that are destructive about that relationship. It's also a movie about like your identity and how other people can come along and kind of like take a piece of that and like what does that mean for you going forward in the future. There's a lot of elements to the look of the film that are like reflections, mirrors, and off-white just wall blank walls and all of those things relate to like the character and their journey and like the essence of the movie. Very intentional. Everything's very purposeful. Even and, even when like plot wise, I don't understand why every scene is where it is or why I just watched a certain thing happen. Uh, the elements that make up this movie, the symbols, the visual elements that make up this movie, are very intentional. But also, there there are movies that are like you can tell that all the filmmaking is so intentional. It's all like well crafted and everything, but it doesn't feel real in that way. It kind of takes away the realism from the movie because it's like all about like, well, the camera's like telling you this, but this movie yeah. also has that feeling of it really being real and watching real moments yeah. unfold. So everything about this movie, I just found really engaging and like, it definitely has a weight when the movie ends, like it kind of like slowly like burns into you and you might re like think back on the movie in an interesting way. And for that reason, like I thought it was really well done. I thought that, all the slow moments that might be in the movie are worth it because in the end it has like that power. You walk out of the movie and it kind of creeps up on you. The way that you process this movie, I think, is part of the experience. So I think you need to give the movie its time to like sink in after you're done with it because you get really like caught up in the world and then, you know, when you leave it, I think that's when the movie kind of shows that it actually has like a real power, a real weight to it. I really thought it was a pretty great movie. Uh, yeah, for me, this might end up being one of my favorites of the year. And I think it's probably even worth watching a second time. Possibly. And I, and I look forward to that. I look forward to that. I'll, I'll say it's a 9.5. I'm going to have to give the same exact rating as you, buddy. I'm going to give it a 9.5. I could see it being somewhere in the bottom five of my top ten. No Oscar nominations? Oh, no. But hopefully a slew of Indie Spirit nominations. Yeah, I think we I'd be got... shocked if she didn't get director for this movie. She absolutely Picture, it. director, actress for sure. Actor or supporting actor, wherever they want to put that guy in. And screenplay. It, it, it definitely just feels like that Indie Spirit contender. And maybe sure. you'll see it at other critic circles. Maybe some director uh, nominations for this person. Excellent movie. What souvenirs do you have and where'd you get them?